First Corinthians 1.14 Everything is permissible but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible but not everything is constructive. Nobody should seek his own good but the good of the others. Eat anything sold in the meat market without raising questions of conscience for the Lord and everything in it. If some unbeliever invites you to a meal and you want to go eat whatever is put before you without raising questions of conscience. But if anyone says to you, this has been offered in sacrifice, then do not eat it, both for the sake of the man who told you and for the conscience sake, the other man's conscience, I mean not yours. For why should my freedom be judged by another conscience? If I take part in the meal with thankfulness, why am I denounced because of something I thank God for? So wh whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the Church of God. Even as I try to please everybody in every way, for I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. I praise you for remembering me in everything and for holding to the teaching just I pass them on to you. Now I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of, of the woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head, and every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors your head. It is just as though her head were shaved. If a woman does not cover her head, she should have her hair cut off. And if it is a disgrace for a woman to have her hair cut or shaved off, she should cover her head. A man ought not to cover his head, since he is the image of glory of God. But the woman is the glory of man. For man did not come from woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. For this reason, and because of the angels, the woman ought to have a sign of authority on her head. In the Lord, however, woman is not independent of man, nor is man independent of woman. For as woman came from man, and also man is born of woman, but everything comes from God. Judge for yourselves. Is it prosper for a woman to pray to God with her head and cover? Does not the very nature of things teach you that if a man has long hair, it is a disgrace to him, but that if a woman has long hair, it is her glory. For long hair is given to her as a covering. If anyone wants to be contentious about this, we have no other practice, nor do the churches of God. Amen. And in the previous lesson, the Word of God have explained to us anything related to the Holy Communion, that the bread is not the body of Christ, except if it is put in the mouth of man and the voice of the pastor is heard, eat, this is my body. Do this in my remembrance. If we don't eat, as it was well explained last time, and we will read from 10:19. Do I mean that then that a sacrifice offered to an idol is anything or that an idol is anything? No, but the sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons 
not to God and I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of the demons too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Are we trying to arouse the Lord's jealousy? Are we stronger than He? And the, child, the Gentiles were eating and drinking the pagans of the sacrifices, but we participate on the table of Christ. Because Christ died for our sins. That's why all the sins that were collected before and after Christ The Lord expressed what he felt. Ili, Ili, Lama Sabachthani. Because it was the only person, Christ, that God take his side of him while he was on the cross of Calvary because all the sins were on him. And now we go to some important matters. The Word of God says that everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is constructive. We are free from sin and we serve the Lord. And then we are saints and have a fruitful life. Because anyone who is set free with the freedom of the Holy Bible, then he is really free. And always according to the Word of God and the will of God. But here it says something special. Despite doing whatever I think, what I do, what I like, since it is according to the Word of God, because there are some things that it's not beneficial for me to do so. Because some people might be scandalized. And I should not do this because I might harm some people. And the critical point of the Christian is is not only to do the will of God for the Christian because this is an absolute freedom but there is something more what I do should be on the benefit of the other man and there is a good example for the ones who are eating the sacrifice of, ca of pagans who are participating on the table of the demons And the Word of God says something very important about the earth and everything that belongs to the earth are belonging firstly to the Lord. And there is a psalm for what we have explained regarding the things of God. And the Word of God explained to us that when you go to a house, whatever they offer to you, 
you can eat and because you're free to eat and you are not obliged to ask but if somebody tells you that what you what is offered to you is a sacrifice of the pagans then you are free to eat it but for the others who know that you have to eat the sacrifice of pagans you should not eat it not because it is forbidden to you but not to scandalize him and this is a unique example for many things don't do things that you are free to do it from the word of God if you scandalize or make damage to the people of Israel, to the Greeks or the Gentiles. We should be very careful for the people who are watching us because when you know what you have to do but you don't do it, then this is considered as a sin. And I know that if I eat stark as they do in the Orthodox Church, this, th this is not a problem. But if I know that the one who is next to me knows that this is sacrifice of pagans, for his conscience, I should not eat it because this will be a sin for him. Because the truth of word is not revealed to him and I will harm him. And we will read the Psalm 24 which is a unique psalm for Jesus and the Church of Christ. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Very depth knowledge to know that the earth is the Lord's. The Lord created it and the Lord will destroy it. It's His. And not only the earth, but everything in it. Because if the Lord will not maintain through the world whatever is being made next to us, that everything will be destroyed. Do you know that the water in the earth consists the 70% of the earth and the 30% is the land? And when the God created the earth was full of water and the God said to be separated the earth from the sea and the water remained at the sea the Lord said and the Lord said and the Lord maintains it and I will tell you something that you already know with this climate crisis that the the temperature is raised the ice is melting and there are nations 
they do not have fresh water but they have salty water because of this phenomenon and when I was in the Netherlands which is under the sea surface and it's a paradise the 500 after after Christ the Jews were living in the northern Europe and they were left and they decided to go to the Netherlands which was a salty place that nobody could live there because nobody accepted the Jewish people <coughs> and they transformed the Netherlands to the paradise of God <coughs> which is a great crown country with river but around the Netherlands there is a structure that not allowing the sea water to enter to the land and I visited with my children when I was there a museum with the Temple of Solomon and was it was an original copy of the temple with the ark with all the spaces with the table with the light and while I was walking and looking I was full in the Holy Ghost and I was speaking in tongues glorifying the Lord and was crying because I felt the presence of God but for who only for the faith who know the scriptures and the word of God says something very important the earth is the Lord's and everything in it the world and all who live in it for he found it the Lord it upon the seas the foundation of the earth are upon the sea and establish it upon the waters and this is incredible my brethren and we enter to the critical point of this psalm who may ascend the hill of the Lord who may stand in his holy place and the word of God says that the mount of the Lord will be unsaid over all the mounts and all the nations will ask to be teach the word of justice and the way the people should walk and who will ascend the hill of the Lord and the scripture says that there will be once the earth be quaked and this is something that is coming and may the Lord protect us to stay where the God have put us because it's very critical to go wherever I should not using my thinking for everything for all things selecting a house where should you go where the Lord put you and I have an experience on this my house was on the third floor it was a big apartment and we were there every night 60 70 people praying to the Lord
But my son asked me to be transferred to the first floor to a smaller apartment, and that was something I didn't want it. And he has an explanation because of his job. He needed more space. And when I went to the first floor apartment, I felt so disappointed because I didn't like it. And I said, my wife, I will rent another house. But after many years, I said to the Lord, what a nice house I have. I have my office and my house is big and whatever God does is perfect. But whatever I want or whatever I like is useless. That's why the word of God says, who may ascend the hill of the Lord, who may stand in his holy place? Who is that man who can ascend the hill of the Lord? And the word applies for the four characteristics this man has. And the message for t today is to ask these four characteristics. First, firstly, he who has clean hands. Be careful for what you do. Secondly, and a pure heart. <laughs> Third, who does not lift up his soul to an idol. And we don't want whatever we want to have. We want to have whatever God wants. Amen, my brothers. And the last, which is the most important, most probably, or swear by what is false. And he's a blessed man. His yes is yes, amen, and his no is no. Whatever he thinks, he does. And now the word explains that he will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Blessing and vindication he will receive. Blessing of God and vindication from God. Seek first the kingdom's heaven and Anything else you need, it will be given to you. It's incredible to have God's vindication. And this man will receive the blessing from God. A blessed man because his hope will be on the Lord. And who is the blessed man? The one who hopes in the Lord. He's the blessed man. And he will ascend the hill of the Lord. And who will receive the vindication of God? The one who has mercy, truth, and love. Such is the generation of those who seek him. Who seek your face, O oh God of Jacob. That's why we should all know the God is truth. And is giving to the seekers, the ones who seek the God. And where will I find the God? In your room. Because He is waiting for you to listen for you and to speak to you alone with closed doors, without mobile phones, without anything that distracts you from your communication with the Lord. And there, I repeat for many times, when you will settle 
everything with God, then you will ask him to ascend you in the throne of grace to receive grace and give you blessings. It's very important to ascend to the throne of grace. It's such a, a, a perfect gift and th this is for free. Uh, it's a pity not to use it. The greatest blessings in my life I have received when I asked the Lord to ascend the throne of His grace. From the first time I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Don't leave this great opportunity to seek for the Lord. Because such is the generation of those who seek Him, who seek your face. And the result, lift up your heads, O you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. This is the resurrection of the dead. And the result will be the rapture. And we will see the resurrected Lord face to face and we'll understand that we're same with Him. And I re read again. Lift up your heads, O oh, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. And they ask, Who is this King of glory? The Lord. The Lord Christ. The Son of God. The Almighty God. Our Lord and our God is Lord Christ. The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. He will fight our battles if you follow him and walk in his footsteps. And the word repeats, lift up your heads, oh you gates, lift up them up, you ancient doors that the King of Glory may come in. And everybody is wondering, who is this King of Glory that will enter to the gates in the heavens that will open glorious with His church? The Lord Almighty, He is the King of Glory. And it is very important, my beloved brothers, to know the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And with this knowledge, we should not scandalize. any nations for the good of the people and the church of God. It's a big sin to create a scandal and scandalize a man. And this is something God dislikes. And why should I respect all the people? Because I don't know what the God will do to him who is my enemy. And remember, Saul, who renamed Paul, a big ha hunter, a blaspheme for the Christians and the church, he was arresting women men and children and force them to blasphemize 
the name of the Lord and he became a servant of Lord whoever you see don't bother him because you don't know what the Lord has prepared for him and I repeat everything is permissible but not everything is beneficial don't fight with anyone everything is permissible but not everything is constructive may the Lord protect us so whatever we do to be for the benefit of everybody around us And we should not think that we are perfect because we are human beings. And the Lord will judge me. He will judge me for what I am seeking. Do I seek for the benefit of another man or not? Not my benefit, but the others. Not my construction but the other's construction. This is the original Christian. And this should be a law for myself, for yourself, because this is a personal matter. It, and it should be a law. Never bother anyone and never do something that will scandalize anyone not a Jews nor the Church of Christ eat anything sold in the meat market without raising questions or conscience for the earth is the Lord's and everything in it as we already read and whatever you see whatever you hear and the word of God says watch out for what you hear and how you hear and keep your heart clean keep your hands clean And whatever you do, do it for the glory of Christ. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the Church of God, uh, even as I try to please everybody in every way. For I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. Do you understand the importance of being pleasing and good to everyone? Because this will be the example for the people around me to be saved. And don't look for what you do to construct yourself, but construct the others. I And we are not seeking our own good, but the good of many so that they may be saved. Two are the main things that the 
Christian is doing. Whatever we do is for the glory of God. Whatever is happening in his life, this is to be done for the glory of God. And the Almighty God to be glorified with our works, with our words, with our life. To be a good example. Always. And the second characteristic, I care about the other's blessing. And I'm very cautious not to scandalize anyone. And this is very critical because if I do so, this is a problem. We should be very careful and not curse but bless the others. And I was lucky today because I was not crashed with another car that suddenly turned left and appeared in front of me and the man's righteousness it's like a dirty cloth. And this is what happened with this car. But the, righteous, the righteousness of man is like a dirty cloth. You're not wearing the white and shiny garments when you are getting angry, like what I did. But we should execute the word of God. And we may be angry, but we should not sin. Watch out. And what should you do? If you're angry and you have right, in such a case, look down and ask for forgiveness and praise the Lord because this is a training from God as such is described in Hebrews And if your children were, were born in the church, but they're not following anymore the Lord, this is a result because you're angry to them. And the result is to be coward and leave you when he will have this opportunity because he's afraid of you. That's why the fear of the Lord is not to throw you thunders, but not to make him sad. That's why we treat correctly to our children without uh, anger. In this way you will keep your children in the Lord's presence. Don't force your children to do whatever you want, but explain them and you will ha have the grace of the Lord. And another mistake,
and having experienced once a family with four children that they were never absent from the church but they had a, a disadvantage while they were growing the children they loved them extremely and whatever the children asking they were taking but this is not according to the word of god and i was talking to him take care of your children put the limitations don't let them free teach them what should they do and what they should not and then you will have a good result in your family and we have responsibility to grow up our children correctly but also behave in a good manner to our brothers and we have responsibility for all around us don't say to anyone that the way you walk you will go to the hell open your mouth for blessing for construction if you speak badly to him he, he will leave the church don't terror anyone and I remember I was in th in the province and I couldn't speak to anyone because I was a director on a factory and a priest from that place was against me so I couldn't speak because I would be imprisoned and I was very sad thinking what to do and what to say and while I was praying to the Lord in my office the Lord saw me a vision one boxing ring that were many people fighting each other and uh, among them I was there but I was very shiny and I heard the Lord telling me you will evangelize the people with your life and this is the best evangelism this is the best way to see on you the Christ there's not something better than this so the people will say he's different from us he's not like us and you know what they said about me he's a good man but he's certain and praise the Lord but the Lord did miraculous things in, in my work and I will tell you one other time what he did and uh, then he created a church of 60 70 people and the people who visited me in my home I was speaking for the Lord and the say in the second day they were born again and the third day they were baptized in the Holy Spirit and brothers from all Greece were visiting me it was very nice and everybody was coming to me to speak for the Lord and the first person was my secretary who was also helping me on my house cleaning and the second day she came with her husband and asked me to speak for the Lord to both of them 
and she knew about this because she heard the tapes with the, reco the recorded services. And I was praying to the Lord to give me the light and give me words and speak to them. And for whatever they were telling me that was from God, I was agreeing. And then they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. They were born again. It's very serious, my brothers, to evangelize the people with our appearance, with our life, <coughs> with our work, our hands to be clean. Not to lie and not to be evil. Bless be the name of the Lord. The Lord do miracles in your life. If you care about the others than yourself, about the others' constructions than your constructions, then God will do miracles, things that you cannot imagine. I don't think that only by speaking the people will be saved, except in the case of an evangelist. But all of us are simple men. So with the testimony of our life, we'll testify the name of the Lord. And when they ask us, be ready to reply. So everybody who asks you to speak to him for the Lord, may the Lord help us. Everything is in my power, but it's not beneficial for me. So what I will do is anything for the good of the one who is set next to me in his construction. And then I will see an almighty God, a powerful God. May the Lord keep us my brethren. And we will continue on our next lesson about the women coverage. For long hair is given to her as a covering. And the glory of the woman is her hair, but her hair should be covered. So when she glorifies the Lord, she will be blessed. <coughs> 